Hello FPL managers, my name is Jack and welcome back to another video. Today we have a look at our transfer plans for game week 30, where we discuss how we've got on so far in double game week 29, and have a look at some transfers that we are thinking of making in coming game weeks. If you guys are enjoying the FPL videos, drop a like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and also to make sure you don't miss any future FPL content for the remainder of the season, have those notification bells turned on as we, uh, as we build up to future blank and double game weeks coming up so have the notification bells turned on and with that being said let's jump into the video so first of all let's have a look at the team for double game week 29 overall a pretty good week for us so far we've scored a total of 77 points but there are still a few selection headaches that we do have to sort out in the remainder of the year so we will go over those shortly First off, let's start with the goalkeeper. De Gea was one of the players that we brought in uh, late before the deadline. I was tossing up which goalkeeper option to go for. Still, Ariza Balaga, Martinez, De Gea, Raya, all are good goalkeeper options that were in the discussion. We did end up uh, choosing to go for David De Gea. Unfortunately, he couldn't get himself the clean sheet, but he did get himself a save bonus point. So we scored two points in the first week against Newcastle, so not a great start. Brentford at home is another really good fixture, though, for a good chance of a Manchester United clean sheet. Definitely a lot easier than the Newcastle fixture away, uh, which was their first fixture of the double game week. Newcastle were really, really good in that game, and they uh, had to make a couple of massive saves to prevent uh, Manchester United con uh, conceding even more goals. So De Gea couldn't get himself a clean sheet, as a lot of the other keepers also couldn't get themselves clean sheets. Still didn't get a clean sheet. Uh, Ray didn't get a clean sheet. Martinez did, though. So he was one of the highest scoring goalkeepers so far this week. Still, uh, by the same token, did get himself an assist. But I think I don't want to use up that third Brighton slot on a goalkeeper. I'm looking to get him a Toma later on in the season, as I think if I don't have him in the team, that is going to provide us with quite a few headaches. I'm sure he will be an extremely popular option to end the season. Season, as Brighton still have multiple double game weeks coming up, which of course I need triple Brighton assets for, and Matome is probably the best Brighton asset right now, so I need him in the team, so I didn't go for Steel there. De Gea, the move didn't initially pay off in the first week, he's still got a good fixture against Brentford at home, still got some good fixtures coming up, plus a double game week still coming up for Manchester United, so I think he will perform fairly well for us in the remainder of the year, and he can rotate with Ramsdale, of course, as you can see here on the bench, if we need any further assistance in getting the best possible fixture in goals. Otherwise, looking at the uh, the rest of the defenders, Trippier was the only defender to return in his first fixture of the double game week. A bit concerned about Badia Shield now. Yet yeah, another rest for him. He just seems to be in and out of that Chelsea team. Can't get himself a consistent starting spot. And he's definitely one of the players on the chopping block. Especially since Chelsea do blank in Gamic 32. I think right now is a good chance to get rid of Badia Shield. Switch him to another uh, defense who does have good fixtures coming up as well. So that uh, is an option that we'll discuss later on in the video. Some potential Badia Shield replacements. And then Henry and Estupinian both can recall clean sheets in a shootout between Brentford and Brighton, a 3-3 draw in that one, which did prove quite fruitful for some very popular attackers in this game, which we'll get to shortly. Solly March was one of those guys. We had him on captaincy, picked himself up an assist with a great ball in behind to Danny Welbeck. March could have even had himself a goal if Raya hadn't made an excellent one-on-one -on -one save, so it could have been a huge hole for March in this game, but unfortunately just walks away with the assist rather than the goal and assist. Also, Matoma did get himself a goal in that fixture, so we outscored March by two points, adding to the frustration a little bit of this game week, but otherwise still fairly happy with how the rest of the squad's gone. Barnes and Rashford uh, saying that, though, did blank in their first fixtures of the double. But by the same token, both of those players probably have their easier fixture of the double game week as their second fixture. Barnes with Aston Villa at home is a great chance to pick up an attacking return and Rashford with Brentford at home likewise. So I think those two guys should be on for some potential attacking returns in the second fixture of the double. Mo Salah as well, really, really happy with him. He's only got a 20% ownership inside the top 1 million FPL managers right now. Got himself six points away to Manchester City, which is just about as much as you can ask for as this is probably one of the hardest fixtures as far as an FPL standpoint goes. 
So very happy with Mo Salah there. He expertly converted his chance. Unfortunately, picked up a yellow card, though not a too soon after scoring, which uh, did put a little dampen on the excitement from the goal. But nonetheless, Chelsea as his next fixture is a really good chance for him to get himself yet another attacking return as he's been in a superb form for Liverpool recently. Uh, looking to the forwards up top, Watkins, Tony, both very, very good there. Eight and nine points, respectively. Uh, Watkins with a great fixture still to go against Leicester away. I'm really hopeful for some more attack and returns for him. He's been in a superb form for Aston Villa in recent game weeks, so I am hopeful for a Watkins goal here, as Leicester's defence has been very, very poor since the resumption of the Premier League. Tony, to be fair, does have a slightly harder fixture. Manchester United away, not the easiest one from an attacking perspective, but already happy with his nine-pointer in the first fixture against Brighton away. Wasn't looking like the easiest. A uh, couple of fixtures for Brentford attackers, Brighton away, Manchester United away. Two fairly strong defences, but Tony's already found himself a goal entry bonus points so that's more than I could ask for from this double and then we did activate our bench boost as well which was one of the main reasons that we've done so well this week Ramsdale couldn't get the clean sheet unfortunate that Leeds scored late in this game as if they didn't, we would have had White picking up the extra four points plus two more bonus. Rams, that would have had himself seven. So it could have been so many more points for us on the bench boost had Arsenal recorded the clean sheet. Nonetheless, White got himself eight points for the goal. As he's actually been finding the net and uh, getting himself assists in recent game weeks, which is really not something that we've seen from Ben White really ever in, since he's been in the Premier League, whether that's been with Brighton or Arsenal. So it's good to see him getting himself goals and assists. Odegaard was able to get himself an attack return. It picked up six points points in this fixture and Harry Kane as well got himself a goal this morning converting from the penalty spot picked up two bonus points but unfortunately got the yellow card so he scored seven making a very productive week for us on the bench picking up 24 points on the bench boost a very very good bench boost for us I'm more than happy with that all single gaming players on the bench all th uh, three out of four of those guys providing returns Extremely happy there. So that's brought us up to 77 points this week, up to 560k in the world. So that's seen a roughly uh, 100k green arrow so far this game. But of course, with 11 fixtures still to be played in the side, I am hopeful for an even bigger green arrow and a potentially solid march with a haul against Bournemouth could really, really help us out in ways of taking on even bigger green arrows. He's got a great chance. Bournemouth away on captaincy. Hopefully, he can get himself a goal. So with that in mind, let's discuss our transfer replacements for Batty Shield. So here are my three current favorite Badia Shield replacements, all with different uh, pros and cons in terms of avoiding blanks, getting more doubles, having good fixtures in the short term versus long term. First of all, let's discuss Luke Shaw. He's at a very similar price to Badia Shield, so he should be easily uh, affordable for us to get into the team, just at 5.2 compared to Badia Shield at 5.0. Luke Shaw, obviously already a fairly popular option, nearly 25% ownership in FPL. He's got a good fixture in game 30, Everton at home, a good chance for a clean sheet for Manchester United. The only real downside with Luke Shaw is that he does blank in game week 32. But there is massive upside, as not only do Manchester United already have a double game week locked in for the rest of the season, they could also have an additional double game week added. So they've got probably two more double game weeks coming up this year. Uh, of course, they do blank in game week 32, but if I can just rest him for blank game week 32, I've got a defender with good attacking potential, good clean sheet potential, with two double game weeks coming up after the uh, blank in game week 32. So he could be a really, really good defensive asset to have for the remainder of the year. It's just whether I want to get in uh, Luke Shaw now when he's still got the blank coming up in game week 32, or I want to go for uh, one of either Botman or Robertson who don't blank in game week 32. They still have a double coming up in the season after blank game week 32, but they don't have two double game weeks like Manchester United do have. So there is a bit of a toss-up as to whether I want to prioritize having a playing defender for blank game week 32 and sacrificing a double game week down the line. And since we don't have a free hit available, as we've already used it in game week 28, that is really something that we have to take into consideration as I want to make sure I have as many players playing for Blank Gamic 32 without having to take hits as a lot of other people will look to use their free hit this week which of course will mean that I won't have to take minus points I don't want to fall behind the crowd by taking minus points that week so that is really uh, a consideration for my planning that I have to keep in mind uh, Luke Shaw of course been in good touch uh, for Manchester United this season 9 clean sheets 4 assists pretty good underlying numbers as well and an expected clean sheets figure of just under 9 his XA has been 
been uh, fairly well outperformed as the 2.57 XA has lit the four assists for Luke Shaw this season. He's got a good predicted points for game at 30 of 4.3, so if I wanted to get him in in the short term, he could be a good option. A great chance for a clean sheet in game at 30, obviously blanking in game at 32. Uh, but then uh, looking at Botman on the other hand, a not as good fixture at game at 30, Brentford away. I don't expect a clean sheet for Newcastle in this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if they can produce the goods here. Of course, coming off a clean sheet in their most recent game, Newcastle's defense has been superb this season as well. 12 clean sheets for Botman. He has combined this with one assist. Uh, obviously not a massive goal and assist getter. He actually, across the year, has an XA and XG of both less than one. So definitely not a massive attacking uh, defender, but he just is there for the clean sheets. 4.5 consistent starting minutes. You can lock in the clean sheets with Botman. He can chip in with bonus points as well, which is always handy. So he's definitely a good asset uh, to consider as well. Newcastle still with a double game week coming up and pretty good short-term fixtures. They play in blank game week 32. That's another bonus with those assets. So potentially Botman could be worthwhile. Having a double up on Newcastle defense, Trippier and Botman in there. A very, very strong defense across the whole season and by far Newcastle Newcastle's defence has been the strongest out of any of the three defences on this list between United, Newcastle and Liverpool. So that is also a good asset to have in the team. He does allow us to free up a little bit of money as well. 0.5 cheaper than Batty is sure, so we can make another upgrade on the side. Whether we want to bring in Robertson for another defender or Luke Shaw for another defender, that will be uh, very easy to do as we already have a decent amount of money left in the bank. And that does bring me to Andy Robertson. He's the most expensive defender out of the three, coming in at 6.8 million. We can't quite afford the move um, from Batty Ashil up to Robertson right now. We currently have 1.3 left in the bank. Batty Ashil is at 5. That only gives us 6.3. So we could try and go for Van Dyke at 6.5, or we could look to make a downgrade to a player to upgrade uh, to Robertson as well at 6.8. Obviously, I would like Trent Alexander-Arnold as well, but I think Robertson's a good balance between it being a little bit cheaper than Trent, whilst also having a little bit more attacking potential than Van Dyke. Uh, Robertson also in the similar boat to Luke Shaw in the sense that there's not a great uh, amount of point scoring potential in the next two to three weeks. Uh, Liverpool have Arsenal at home in game week 30, which is not ideal. So I'm not expecting a clean sheet in this one. They do play in blank game week 32 though, which is a bonus for having those Liverpool assets. Plus they have a pretty good double coming up. Tottenham and Fulham, I believe, is their double uh, in this in the remainder of the season. So potentially a good chance for a haul for Robertson in that game week. Otherwise, doesn't have two double game weeks like Luke Shaw does, but he does play in blank game week 30. So he does allow us to have a bit of extra uh, breathing space for Blank Gambit 32. The only difficult thing with getting in those Liverpool defenders is that they're very, very expensive. I can't quite afford Robertson, Van Dijk, or Trent in one move. So I'm going to have to make two moves, whether that's Botman in this week, then upgrading another defender to either Robertson or Luke Shaw next week. Uh, that may be the course of action that we do take. Obviously, only one free transfer available this week. We've already taken a minus eight last uh, week in double game week 29. Robertson, seven clean sheets, six assists this year. Probably the most attacking out of any of these three three defenders, and that's really what you're paying for, a really good attacking potential. Six assists. He does have the highest XA amongst these three players as well, with nearly four. Doesn't have a massive expected clean sheets, though, as Liverpool's defense has been a bit underwhelming this season. Saying that, though, they've been really good in recent game weeks, so hopefully they can continue that good defensive form to the rest of the year. So overall, three pretty good picks, all with their advantages and disadvantages. Luke Shaw is probably my favorite option right now, just because he has two double game weeks coming up in the remainder of the year, plus Everton home in game week 30. Uh, compared to Batty Shell, he's got walls away in game week 30, but I'm just not too sure if he's going to get starting minutes. That will then mean we'll have to play uh, a stupid out against Tottenham away, or one of those Arsenal lads against Liverpool away. So that's going to be a bit uh, not ideal for maximizing the best 11 fixtures in game week 30. Whether, uh, whereas if we get in Luke Shaw, Everton at home, a great chance to have him starting over Batty Shell then we can always leave those Arsenal players or have triple Arsenal on the bench against Liverpool away, have a stupid on the bench against Tottenham away, and have a fairly strong starting 11. It's just whether the team is going to be good enough for Blank Gamut 32. Currently, we still have to get rid of one or two players to make the team viable for Blank Gamut 32 to have a full starting 11. So we may have to look to take a hit in Gamut 31 to make that possible for Gamut 32. 
but I think it's a toss up between Luke Shaw and Botman. Having Robertson uh, coming in, uh, having to make two transfers, sorry, to get Robertson to come into the side, not the thing that I want to be doing right now. I don't want to be burning transfers excessively just to get Robertson. Now, I don't think he's worth that much, especially since he only has one double left in the season. So maybe Botman in now could be worthwhile. Have him uh, play in blank gamut 32. Then after blank gamut 32, look to get Luke Shaw in as he has two double game weeks. A great chance to jump back on those Manchester United players with two double game weeks after their blank. That's probably going to be the course of action for me. Brentford at home, whilst not being the easiest fixture compared to Everton at home, is still probably a, a, a good chance for Newcastle's, uh, Newcastle to get a clean sheet. They've got 12 clean sheets this season. They've got clean sheets against much better teams and much harder fixtures than Brentford away. So potentially Botman is the player that we get in now. Luke Shaw is the player that we get in in game week 33. And the defense is pretty well set up for the remainder of the year as well. Obviously got a stupid end there, capitalizing on that Brighton defense. Rico Henry's there in that Brentford defense. And of course, Trippier, he's been sold all season in the Newcastle defense. So overall, that's kind of my transfer plan thinking for the rest of the year. Batty Shield, by far the player that I want to get rid of the most. He's just not got those, uh, those consistent starting minutes. And with a blank coming up in game week 32, I do need to sort out the team for that game week, especially without a free hit token. So thanks for watching today's transfer plans. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it informative. If you did, drop a like and subscribe and let me know how your guys Double Game Weeks 29 has gone so far as I'm sure a lot of people will be pretty happy with how their team's been set up uh, for Double Game Week 29, especially coming into those second uh, round of fixtures for players having a Double Game Week. Uh, also, to make sure you guys don't miss any future FPO videos, have those notification bells turned on. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.